Hi, right, Carl. I'm going to go ahead and run you a quick linear regression with U.S. immersion, Spanish language immersion, and parental stress as the IVs, the predictors, and depression as the DV. Let's pull it up. Okay, so we go to analyze regression linear. And let's reset this. So the DV is depression. And your IVs are U.S. immersion, Spanish language immersion, and parental stress. So we're going to check the assumptions as well. Statistics. We always want these and the Durbin Watson. I'll go over those as we hit them. Your plots. Z presid goes on the X. Z resid residuals goes on the top here. And the save. This is to check for multivariate outliers. And there's other methods, but I'm a Mahalanobis guy. And the rest of those, I don't think there's anything there. No, good. And then we click OK. Boom. So the output goes like this. There's the means and the standard deviations of the variables. We really don't care about that. Here's the correlations between all the variables. We do care about it, but not in this format. We're going to go ahead and look at it in different boxes. Give us more information. This tells us it was just a regular standard multiple regression. And here's our model summary box. So there's our R squared, which is our effect size. Get out of there, you. That's our effect size, which is huge, which is huge. And we're going to look at the ANOVA box. If the ANOVA is significant, that means your prediction model is significant. And it is, right? So what this means is at least one of your predictors, either parental stress, U.S. immersion, or Spanish immersion, one of those is a significant predictor of depression. Got it? And your R squared, that's, that's again, that's a huge R squared. What that literally means is about 36% of the variance, the change in the depression scores, can be explained by at least one of these variables. So now we're going to go down and see which variable is significant. And if they're all significant, it's going to put them in order of, of the best predictors of depression. We go to the coefficients box. So the coefficients, here are your IVs, right? And there's your DV, right? It says at the bottom is depression, depression. So here is U.S. immersion. We look across. Don't look at the constant. That means something different. That's if you're going to write out the equation, which I don't think you guys have to do that. But we're going to look at the, the effect of depression by the U.S. immersion variable. So we go across the row and we look at this sig value right there. All right? So in other words, that is not less than 0.05. Therefore, U.S. immersion is not a significant predictor of depression. Down to Spanish language. Again, we look at the sig value. Because it's not less than 0.05, it is not a significant predictor. So in other words, it doesn't matter. Their depression scores do not count do not are not affected by either US immersion or Spanish immersion. Now here's the here's the money right here. The parental stress that is significant. Shkabam. So out of your model, the only predictor of depression is their parental stress scores. And it's it's pretty high. They're pretty strongly related. What this this is the unsta this is unstandardized B-way right there, 0.268. What that means is when stress, parental stress goes up by a unit, by one unit, whatever it is, when that goes up by one, you can expect their depression scores to go up by 0.268, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is actually pretty significantly correlated there. So that's your significant predictor is parental stress. Now let's address the assumptions of your regression model. The first one is uh, what we call linearity. There's several ways to do linearity. Um, linearity means that your IVs, each of your IV has a non-zero correlation with the DV. So the way I do it is I simply look at the correlation box. So none of these correlations are zero, right? 
So here's right here's depression. Here's depression. Is correlation between depression and U.S. immersion is 0 0.220. Between depression and Spanish language, negative 0.2. And between depression and parental stress, none of them are zero. So that's the first assumption. It was not violated. There are no non-zero correlations between the IVs and the DVs. Again, that's what we call collinearity. I'm sorry, that's what we call linearity. All right, next assumption. This number, uh, let me move that over for you. This number, your Durbin Watson, that number should be close to two, which it is. And it's supposed to be between 1.5 and 2.5, roughly. And again, it's, it's close to two, so that means that your data did not violate the assumption of autocorrelation. Autocorrelation is a lot like multicollinearity. That's when that's when your IVs are more correlated with each other than they are the DV, and that, that becomes a problem. But it did not violate autocorrelation. Moving on down. And let's see, nothing there. Nope, no, it's nothing there. This one, the Mahalanova's distance, 25.896. You do have an outlier. That number is too high. Hold on a second. So what you're looking at here is what we call a, a Mahalanova's critical distance calculator. And I've done this a million times. So I know if you've got two predictors, then the maximum number should be somewhere around 15 or 16, something like that. But I'm going to show you, we're going to go the real way. So your alpha is 0.05, that's your critical cutoff. Let's figure out what your sample size is. Let's go to your data set. How many people you got in this study? You got 67. And you have three predictors, right? That's how many predictors you got. So yeah, there, there's the maximum number, 16.832. So anybody above that, is considered a multivariate outlier. In other words, they're way too high in, in more than one of the IVs. Their scores are way too high in one of the predictors or way too low in more than one of the predictors. So we're just going to look out and see who it is. And if it's only one, we're not going to make a big deal out of it. So this is our Mahalo Novus score. And I can see the guy right there. Boom. But watch, we can put him in. Uh, let's put him in ascending. No, descending. Bam. Yeah, so you got one guy, one person that is a multivariate outlier, and it's because it's just one guy, I wouldn't do anything with him. But like his parental stress is way high, his depression is way low. And what else? We got Spanish language, that's kind of low. Lurgeon, right? So that's what it looks like. This guy's low in everything. He's low on immersion in U.S., He's low on Spanish immersion. He's low on... Actually, uh, so his DV, depression, is really low. And his parental stress is kind of... Eh. So we, we... You have the option of throwing this guy out or not. But I'm going to go ahead and run it with him. It's because Again, because it's only one guy, it's not going to make a big deal about the assumption. So... There was one violation. So one subject did violate the assumption of um, multi, he was a multivariate outlier and we should should probably get rid of him, but I'm just going to leave him in there for now. And then back to the output. That's not the output. This is the output. Okay, so you got one multivariate. And then this is our check for homoscedasticity. It's a big word. But all that means is that the residuals are pretty much even across the board. That's all it means. And to check that, we stick in the lowest, right? Lowest line, Superman's girlfriend, if you get that joke. And it looked like it did violate that assumption. This, not, this line here, the lowest line, should be relatively flat and horizontal. Relatively flat and horizontal. This is not flat, right? This is not horizontal. So it looks like the data did violate the assumption of homoscedasticity, but it's not a big deal. You can still run your, your output as is. So is that, there's five of them. So linearity is okay. 
Oh yeah, we need, I forgot to check multicollinearity, which we look at these numbers right here. Either look at your tolerance. Oops, I'm sorry. Where is it? Right there. Um, where are you? Uh, 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 uh. We're looking for tolerance in VIF. I'll probably just zord right over it, didn't it? Yeah, there it is right there. Tolerance. These two guys here. Right, so tolerance should be greater than 0.1, which it is, and VIF should be less than 10, which it is. So it did not violate the assumption of multicollinearity. So the big five, linearity, autocorrelation, multicollinearity, multivariate outliers, of which you had one, and then homoscedasticity, which looks like it was violated. But uh, again, you can still run the test. Just call, just call it... Um, robust because regressions are robust which means you can you could violate some of the assumptions every once in a while and the results would still be considered both valid and reliable so here here's here's the results what i'm going to do real quick is i'm going to delete this guy i'm going to delete him because he's an outlier and i'm going to show you that the outcome will probably be exactly the same right and i'll just put um no outlier. How do you spell outlier? Out. All right, so we, we delete this bad boy. And delete. Clear. Boom. And then we save and then we rerun. And the, the results will, you know, 99% sure that it'll be exactly the same as the other one. Because one person usually does not affect that much of a data outcome. <laughs> and, yep, it's still significant. The effect size went up a little bit, right? Now it's 0.371, which is, again, really, really strong. <clears throat> and here's our coefficients box. Nothing has changed, right? U.S. immersion is still not a significant predictor. Spanish language is not a significant predictor, but parental stress is. And it's a very strong one. And what else happened here? Uh, 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 uh. So collinearity was not violated, right? There's still tolerance is greater than 0.1. VIF is less than 10. And let's see if this changed anything on our homoscedasticity. Made a little bit better, right? This is a lot better than the other one. So I would say after, if, if you do decide to delete that multivariate outlier, then you could say that it the data do, it does not look like it violated the assumption of homoscedasticity. So, eh. All right, I'm going to send you this video and I'm going to send you uh, links to our support website that's got step-by-step -step details on how to look at all of this stuff but again if you need me just go ahead and make an appointment all right that's it mgz out